हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग वेल दिस इज योर मैथ्स टीचर श्वेता बजाज स्टूडेंट्स प्लीज सब्सक्राइब माय चैनल इफ नॉट सब्सक्राइब येट डोंट फॉरगेट टू मेंशन योर नेम क्लास एंड सेक्शन इन द कमेंट बॉक्स टू मार्क योर सेल्फ एज प्रेजेंट इन मैथमेटिक्स क्लास now students we were doing our chapter number 4 integers and in the previous video we learnt about the properties of addition of integers successor and predecessor and started with our exercise 4b and today in this video we are going to continue with the same but before that let's take a quick recapitulation Now students in the previous video we learnt about the properties of addition of integers and the first property was closure property it says that on adding two integers we will always get an integer then we learnt about the commutative property and commutative property says that on adding integers in any order the sum will be same and after that we learnt our third property that is associative property and this property says that we can group integers in any order it will not affect the sum the sum will remain same then we learnt our fourth property and it says that on adding zero to any integer we will get the integer itself then in the last we learnt that on adding integer and it suppose it we will always get zero exercise 4b question number 4 it says that find the additive inverse of first part is 109 now students as you know that when the number is positive its additive inverse is negative and when the number is negative its additive inverse is positive so additive inverse of 109 will be minus 109 hopefully first part is clear to you now second part you have to tell the additive inverse of 0 now students as we know that 0 is neither positive nor negative therefore additive inverse of 0 will be 0 only hopefully second part is also clear to you now next is third part and in third part you have to find the additive inverse of minus 187 now students here the number is negative therefore its additive inverse will be positive only that means additive inverse of minus 187 will be 187 hopefully question number 4 is clear to you now next is question number 6 it says that add the integers and i have taken third part and in third part we are given three integers minus 209 plus minus 5123 plus minus 678 now students when we are given with three integers then in such a case we will group two integers and here i am taking in the bracket minus 209 plus minus 5123 bracket close plus minus 678 now students according to our board maths rule firstly we will solve the bracket and here 209 and 5123 both are negative that means what we have to do we have to add them and on adding 209 and 5123 what we will get we will get 5332 right and the sign which sign we will take we will take the common sign and here the common sign is minus so that means minus 
two plus inside the bracket minus six hundred seventy eight. Now students here here again both the numbers are negative. Now what we have to do? We have to add them, and on adding both of them, what we will get? We will get six thousand ten as the answer. And what sign we will take here? We will take the common sign. And what is the common sign here? The common sign is minus. So that means minus six thousand ten is the answer. Hopefully, third part is clear to you. Now next, I have taken is fifth part, and in fifth part also there are three integers. So students, what we will do here? We will again group two integers, right? So here I am grouping minus thirteen plus five hundred thirteen. That means I have written both of these integers in the same bracket, plus minus four hundred nine. Now, in the next step, students, firstly we will solve this bracket according to the board mass rule. Now here, one number is positive and the other number is negative. That means what we will do? We will subtract them. And on subtracting five hundred thirteen and five hundred thirteen, what we will get? We will get zero as an answer. Now. To this zero, what we will do? We will add minus four hundred nine. Now, students, in one of the property, we have learned that that uh, on adding zero to any integer, we will get an integer itself. So here, what will be our answer? Our answer will be minus four hundred nine. Hopefully, fifth part is also clear to you. Now next, I have taken is question number eight, and it says that find an integer y such that y plus three is equals to zero. Now students, here, firstly, in the left hand side, I will try to remove this three. How can I remove? Students, if I will subtract three from this three, I will get zero. So that means, can I write it like this? Three plus minus three. Now, if I am adding plus minus three here in the LHS, then in RHS also I have to add minus three. Now, in the next step, students, this three is positive, this three is negative. So that means, what we have to do? We have to subtract them, and three minus three. Will gives us what? Will gives us zero only, and you know that zero has no value, so that means y, y plus zero will gives us y only. So y is equals to. Now in the property you have learned that on adding zero to any integer, you will get an integer itself. So here what will be your answer? Your answer will be minus three. So y is equals to. Minus three. Hopefully, first part is clear to you. Students, please note that in the first part, the method applied by you is a balancing method, and you will study about this method in detail in your chapter algebra. Now, next I have taken is third part, and in third part, we are having minus six plus y is equals to zero. Now, students, you know that six plus minus six will gives us zero. So, what I'm going to do? I'm going to add six here. I'm going to add six to minus six. Now, if I'm adding six to the left hand side, then in order to balance this equation, I have to add six to the right hand side also. Now, on solving this, six and minus six, one is positive, other is negative. What I will get? I will get zero because one is positive, other is negative. So we will subtract them. Now zero plus y is equals to, and six is equals to what? Is equals to six only. 
Now here 0 has no value. So that means y is equals to 6 is our answer. Hopefully third part is also clear to you. Now next I have taken is fifth part and fifth part says that y plus 0 is equals to 0. Now students we know that 0 has no value. So the value of y will be equals to 0 only. Hopefully this fifth part is clear to you. Now after discussing this, students please pause your video and note down your home task and for any doubts and queries, you can leave your message in the comment box. I hope you like the video. Thank you.